In this video, we're going through my running back rankings for the 2024 draft class. This is definitely the position group where I feel like I'm most divergent from the consensus this year. And I think early in the process, because there isn't a Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs caliber of prospect, this was billed as a bad running back class. It's probably below average at the top, but I think the depth is comparable to any other year. So starting out at running back 26, we've got Jabari Small out of Tennessee. He has a short, compact build, 5'8", 205 pounds. He's more of a shifty, make people miss in open space type of running back than someone that's gonna get up field and hit the crease. I like some of his ability to avoid tackles, but I wish he was more decisive getting up field. I don't really think he has the size to hold up in pass pro. Tennessee doesn't use their running backs as receivers that often, but he's had a few drops every year, and I don't think he really adds much as a third down back. And outside of some decent lateral agility, he doesn't have great athletic traits, so he's a priority free agent for me. At running back 25, I've got Carson Steele out of UCLA. He was a transfer from Ball State, had 1,528 yards in 2022. I think in the preseason, he was expected to be someone that could go in the mid rounds, but he wasn't nearly as productive at UCLA. He's a huge running back, six foot and a half, 228 pounds. He's got the size to absorb contact and be a decent power back in short yardage situations, but from a speed and quickness and tackle avoidance standpoint I just didn't think he offered much of anything for a player of his size he's also one of the worst pass blockers in this class so to me he's not much more than a third power goal line back my 24th ranked running back is Jawar Jordan out of Louisville running backs one of the positions where I think combine testing matters the least but the one thing that is really important is weight and Jawar Jordan's 193 pounds which is fifth percentile for running backs he's undersized lacks any sort of power element to his game pretty much ineffective in short yardage situations and doesn't really have the contact balance that you want out in the open field when he hits the corner he has to take such a wide angle because he just can't shed arm tackles from the in man on the line of scrimmage he does have good speed he only ran a four five six i felt like he was a little bit faster than that on tape and he's pretty shifty in open space he does a good job of finishing long runs avoiding the final defender he's quick transitioning and moving side to side but to really be a high level runner running back prospect at 193 pounds. You have to have special athletic traits and big playability. I felt like Jawar Jordan was just a decent athlete. Similar story here with Monmouth running back Jaden Sheridan, who comes in at RB23. He's 5'8", 187 pounds. That immediately puts you on thin ice as a running back prospect. And he is fast. He's kind of a short stride, choppy step type of runner, but the speed isn't like Keaton Mitchell levels where I think it's worth taking a flyer on and Mitchell had much better tape against better competition and he ended up going undrafted. There are times even against FCS competition where Jaden Sheridan will get caught from behind. He struggles to play through contact, has very limited receiving experience. He has good ball security, 524 career touches and just one fumble, but I think firmly a priority free agent grade for Jaden Sheridan. Onto the draftable grades, I've got Alabama running back Jace McClellan as RB22. He's kind of a 70 overall, no badges type of player. Good size at 5'10", 221 pounds. He has above average lateral quickness. He's not really explosive out of his cuts, but he's smooth and efficient moving laterally. There were a couple drops in the Texas game week one, but after that, he did a good job catching the football. And I thought he had decent vision. He does a good job setting up his blocks, especially on counter and power runs. He has the size and length to, I think, be an effective of pass blocker, but his footwork and angles and blitz pickup needs a lot of improvement, and he's just not a great athlete. I don't see a lot of dynamic big playability with Jason McClellan. He's a solid, technically sound type of player that I think could find a role as a backup somewhere, but I think the upside is very limited. At RB21, I've got Dejan Edwards out of Georgia, 5'9 and a half, 207, one of the worst testers in this class, and he's a jitterbug, shifty, side-to-side -side type of running back. He's extremely shifty in open space. He makes that first cut. He's got the second cut loaded up, very good at avoiding tackles in tight quarters and stacking moves together. He also has really impressive start-stop ability, or I guess just stop ability. He can catch the ball on a swing route and then stop on a dime, but he's lacking in speed and explosiveness. He doesn't really have the ability to separate from the defense and convert big play opportunities. He struggles to outrun defenders to the corner, even though he does have the rapid change of direction 
penetration ability. He isn't very explosive out of his jump cuts. He doesn't cover a lot of ground. So I think he's a player that could be efficient, but I don't really see him having a lot of 20 plus yard runs in the NFL. And he's exceptional in all of the kind of reliability aspects that coaches are gonna really like. He doesn't fumble. He rarely drops the ball. You can trust him in pass protection. Those are the kind of things that I think could help him establish some sort of rotational role. But the upside is a lead back. I don't really think is there. At RB20, we've got Amani Bailey out of TCU. Another very poor tester, 5'7", 202 pounds. He wins with contact balance, physicality, elusiveness in the open field. He can shake defenders at the second or third level. He can lower his shoulder, power through tackle attempts. I felt like he played a lot bigger than his weight. He did a really good job of bouncing off of tackles. Another player though that just doesn't have home run speed, even though he is able to avoid a lot of tackles, I felt like he was kind of frantic once he hit the second level. He doesn't have the speed to outrun people consistently, so there's kind of a lot of dancing around once he gets downfield. And he's another player that really struggles in pass pro. I would say Amani Bailey, Carson Steele, and Bucky Irving, who we'll get to in a little bit, are probably the three worst pass blocking running backs in this class. My 19th ranked running back is Cody Schrader out of Missouri. He's a transfer from Truman State, which sounds like a fake university, a sixth year senior with a lot of tread on the tires. And at Missouri, he ran a very pro style offense. It's a lot of outside zone and duo, which is a common running scheme for NFL teams. Half of his runs, it felt like, are just hitting the front side B gap on wide zone. He does a great job of reading linebacker flow on zone runs. He was a really bad tester, but I feel like he has enough straight line speed to hit open gaps. He's efficient in and out of jump cuts. He's secure holding onto the football. He doesn't have the best power through contact, but he does a good job when he bounces runs outside of shedding arm tackles. And then he has some potential to find a role on third down. He wasn't used very often as a receiver. He had 192 receiving yards last season, 116 of those came against Tennessee, which was one of his best performances of the season. He has good awareness in pass pro. He's almost always in the right position, but at his size, he really struggles to sustain blocks. And a lot of times he doesn't put up much resistance and blitz pickup. My 18th ranked running back is Kendall Milton out of Georgia. He has the size and frame that's built for the 2003 NFL. He's a powerful downhill runner, shrugs off contact, moves the pile, really good leg drive and contact balance to fall forward through the tackle. He's not an explosive or dynamic athlete by any means. He's basically going to take exactly what is blocked for him plus two yards through the tackle, but he is at least decisive planting and accelerating. I don't feel like he spent a lot of wasted time dancing around in the backfield, and he does a good job using subtle jab steps to set up blocking angles and clear open rushing lanes. My 17th running back is Dylan Lauby out of New Hampshire, and he's a pure receiving specialist. I don't think any team is going to draft him to be a full-time running back. You're taking Dylan Lauby to be in there on third downs and catch the football. He ran probably the most advanced route tree of any running back in this class. He had a lot of snaps lined up in the slot. They'd have him running deep corners, outs, slot fades, wheel routes. From the backfield, he ran a lot of option and Texas routes, and he has some really impressive route running skills. He's sudden and deceptive at the top of his route. He did a good job on wheel routes and slot fades of making difficult adjustments and catching the ball through contact. If we were looking at him purely as a receiver, I don't think there's enough there to be a draftable prospect, but as a receiving running back, he definitely has some valuable skills. I definitely expected him to be more reliable catching the football. He had a few more focus drops than you want to see for a receiving specialist. I only watched his 2023 tape and he didn't have as many drops in the previous seasons, so that could just be a one-time thing. But there's a certain archetype of third down back that's gonna show up several times in this class that I think is a lot harder to find an actual role for them in the NFL than people expect. And that's the third down running back that you can't trust in pass protection. It doesn't matter how dynamic you are as a receiver, if the offense can't keep you in for blitz pickup, coaches aren't going to put you on the field. And I think Dylan Lauby has good awareness and quick reaction time in pass pro, but he just really struggles to sustain blocks. He's pretty undersized with very short arms and at a very weak level of competition, I thought his pass pro tape was just average. And as far as his early down skill set, he has good change of direction skills. I thought especially on duo and inside zone, he did a good job of kind of 
collapsing the linebackers into traffic and then bouncing outside quickly, but he's not really a between the tackles runner. He's easily brought down by first contact. He's very bounce happy and hesitant to work inside the tackles, but I understand it because he's not that effective powering through contact. At RB16, I've got Isaiah Davis out of South Dakota State. This is one of the most entertaining watches of any running back in this class. He has a unique running style that is honestly very reminiscent of Le'Veon Bell. Now, I think the chances that he becomes anywhere near that level of running back are very slim, but the way that he runs is extremely similar. He averaged 6.7 yards and probably four jump cuts per carry. He just zigzags through traffic. Even when the blocking breaks down, he's gonna kind of slither his way to five to six yards. He has incredible spatial awareness and anticipation of incoming defenders. Compared to some other players we've discussed like Amani Bailey and Dejan Edwards that are kind of dancing around side to side and avoiding a lot of tackles, but not really getting upfield, Isaiah Davis is purposefully navigating through the defense and making forward progress. He has good size and play strength. He's not necessarily a bruiser, but he's unbothered by incidental contact. He's just lacking that second or third gear to pull away consistently. He had a really good broad jump, but I don't think he's that explosive and doesn't really project as a big play threat. He also had some drop issues and was a disappointing pass blocker at 218 pounds. But I think Isaiah Davis can be an efficient early down running back, even when the blocking isn't great and there aren't a ton of wide open rushing lanes. My 15 15th running back is Dylan Johnson out of Washington. He's an under the radar player that I'm surprised hasn't gotten more discussion for being on Washington's offense. He's not a great athlete. He doesn't have breakaway speed, but he's just a steady, reliable presence in your backfield. He didn't have a single drop last season. In the last two years, he's had 77 targets and only one drop, just automatic catching the ball out of the backfield. He's smart and physical in pass protection. I think there is some room to develop with his technique there are times he'll kind of overextend in pass pro. He needs to sit back in the chair a little bit more. He's a powerful running back that consistently falls forward through contact. He has an efficient jump cut, good vision for a changing defensive picture. And then he also has a nice stiff arm to help win the edge when he gets out in the alley. And he can make defenders miss in the open field, but he isn't great at transitioning out of a move and maintaining his balance. It's like every cut or move that he makes takes a little bit out of his health bar and his control just steadily declines as he avoids tackles. But I like Dylan Johnson as a high floor, low ceiling running back that can do a little bit of everything. The next player is Oregon running back Bucky Irving at RB14. And I really liked Bucky Irving's tape. He's such a creative runner, very difficult to tackle in the open field. He's got sudden start stop ability. He can change directions, very creative runner with good peripheral vision and easy access to jump cuts. The athletic testing is concerning, but to me, the bigger issue is what we discussed with how difficult it is to find a role as a third down back that can't pass block. I thought the awareness and technique in pass pro were really lacking and at his size I don't really see him having the upside to develop too much in that phase. So he's a very fun college player. I just think there's a chance he can't find a role in the NFL. My RB 13 is Will Shipley out of Clemson. He's another third down back with some really exciting flashes on tape. He's a polished route runner runner. He consistently separates on option routes against flat-footed linebackers, but I was disappointed in his hands. He had too many focus drops in 2023. I think he offers a lot as a runner. He has good speed and very sudden change of direction. He's one of the most patient running backs in this class, sometimes to a fault, but for the most part, he does a great job of setting up his blocks, steering linebackers out of rushing lanes. He can cut and change directions instantly to avoid tackles, but he's 206 pounds. He's not a very powerful runner, doesn't have great contact balance, and in short yardage, he goes down to first level contact. I don't see him as a great early down or goal line type of running back. And then like we discussed with Lauby and Bucky Irving, I don't really trust Will Shipley in pass pro at this point. I think the best thing he showed in his pass pro tape would be on full slides where he's working across the formation. He was very decisive, not a super physical pass blocker, but he doesn't shy away from contact at all. But again, for undersized players, if your technique isn't close to perfect, you just have a very limited margin for error when it comes to sustaining blocks. Shipley's very inconsistent at 
at squaring up blocks and taking good angles into initial contact, and he just doesn't have the length or size to fall back on if he isn't close to perfect with his technique. There were also some occasional mental lapses in pass pro, especially on like cover zero looks. If he had multiple potential rushers to block, he would kind of black out and not block anyone. He isn't very decisive at picking up the most dangerous blitzer and letting the quarterback deal with the free rusher. So even though I really like a lot of aspects of his tape, that's why his grade is lower than most people have him. My 12th running back is Braylon Allen out of Wisconsin. He's a converted linebacker with rare size for the position, 6'1", 235 pounds. That's 96th percentile weight for running backs. He's just a sledgehammer into contact. He can absolutely demolish linebackers or DBs that try to tackle him in the open field. I think he has decent speed for his size, although there is an extended buildup to his top speed. He's kind of a slow starter and that invites some extra contact. He's patient letting his blocks develop. He does a good job of using subtle choppy steps in the early phases of the run to avoid backfield penetration, but he still needs to strike the perfect balance between patience and decisiveness once the gap opens. You want a bigger running back to be more aggressive just planting and accelerating downfield. And there's a lot of plays on his tape where you can just tell that he's new to the running back position. He'll kind of second guess cutback decisions. He'll make a cutback and then try to work back on his initial path and he's out of space and doesn't really have the elusiveness or shiftiness to pull that off. I don't think he has very good balance. If tacklers go low, he's pretty easily brought down by shoestring tackles and very disappointing pass blocking tape for his size. He's cautious and tentative into initial contact. And then on top of all that, He's got nine career fumbles, four in 2023. He's very loose with the ball, doesn't tuck it tight into his body. I think he definitely has some upside. He's the youngest player in this class, but I'm not a big fan of project running backs. I just think there's enough guys every year that are plug and play. And I don't really think he has the athletic upside to be a top five running back where it would actually be worth taking a gamble on that on day two or something. Speaking of project boom bust running backs, at RB11, I've got Isaac Garindo out of Louisville. He had the best athletic testing of any running back in this class. He's the only running back with an athletic score above 90. At six foot, 221 pounds, he ran a 4.33 40 yard dash, which is 99th percentile. His vertical and broad jump were 98th and 94th percentile. And he had pretty solid times in the short shuttle and three cone as well. So he has the size, speed, athleticism profile of like a first round running back prospect but he couldn't see the field at Wisconsin. He transferred to Louisville where he was the second running back to Jawar Jordan. And when you watch his tape, you can see why such a great athlete wasn't as productive as you'd expect them to be. So first of all, the athletic testing is great. The speed you definitely see on tape, but he needs a clear wide open runway to reach his top speed. He's not a player that can just take two steps, hit the gap and reach top speed instantly. There's a lot of plays where he might have an open rushing lane. He just can't access that second or third gear quickly enough. He does have good contact balance. He catches the ball away from his frame, didn't have many focus drops on tape, and I definitely think he's reliable in pass pro, but his vision I think is below average. When the defense changes the picture, he'll kind of get confused and he's not very decisive dealing with slants and gap exchanges. He has an efficient cutback, but he doesn't always press the line on outside zone to set up that cutback lane. And then in the open field, he doesn't have the sudden dynamic dynamic skill set to make that final defender miss. My 10th running back is Ray Davis out of Kentucky. I really liked his tape. I think he has a complete skill set as a running back. He has the kind of build that I look for, short, stocky, low center of gravity. He has excellent contact balance. He can lower his shoulder, ricochet off of tackle attempts. He's able to power through arm tackles and he does a very good job of protecting the football. He's only had two fumbles on 474 carries over the last three seasons, but he's also a really effective pass catcher. He's got natural hands. He rarely drops the ball. They had him running like seam routes from the back backfield and he actually showed the ability to track the ball over his shoulder. I think he just has such a broad skill set and can really fill any role that you need in your offense. He's not a great athlete. I think he does have some change of direction juice at the second level, but in terms of speed and explosiveness, I would say both of those are below average. But I would say the two main things holding him back are vision and usage over his career. He's 24 
34 years old with 834 career touches. The track record of players coming out of college with that much tread on the tires is not great. My ninth running back is Audric Estime out of Notre Dame. He's well built for a full workload in the NFL, 5'11", 221 pounds. He has all the power and yards after contact ability that you would expect for a player of his size. He's very efficient in goal line and short yardage situations. 60% of his carries within the five went for a touchdown. I think that's second in this class to Blake Corum. He's a young player, under 21 years old. You can trust him to hold on to the ball in terms of fumbles and catching the football. He wasn't featured that often in the passing game, but he's caught all 26 of his career targets. But he's a linear running back with very limited change of direction skills or dynamic elusiveness in open space. When he gets to the second level, he's either going to truck the defender or he also has a really impressive hurdle for a player of his size. But he's an upright runner, just not very sudden avoiding tackles. A lot was made about his 40 time at his pro day. He ended up running a 4-6-1, which isn't that bad. He's got some long runs on tape. I think four, three athletes in the NFL are probably going to be able to chase him down, but the 40 is not impacting my grade for him at all. And then a common theme in this class is big running backs that don't play to their size in pass pro. He's lunging into contact way too often. I think he's definitely an early down running back, at least to start out his career. My eighth running back is Blake Corum, and this is the player that I've had the most difficulties assigning a grade to. My scouting report based on his 2022 tape would be completely different than my one based on the tape from last year. Two years ago, he showed just elite contact balance and elusiveness in the open field. He had the ability to stack crisp jump cuts one after the other and navigate through the defense. And then he had the injury to end his 2022 season. And last year, he still had the vision. He was just incredibly easy to tackle in the open field. He struggled to escape the first defender, frequently went down on first contact, and he still had a good year in terms of volume, but that's a Jim Harbaugh stat. He wasn't nearly as efficient. So for an older player that's kind of undersized, not a great athlete, has a lot of usage over his college career, it's hard to decide exactly how to grade Blake Corum. I expect him to look better as a rookie than he did in his final year at Michigan now that he's two years removed from his injury, but there's just a lot of risk and uncertainty with Blake Corum, and I don't see him having the upside of being a top five running back. At RB7, I went with Rasheen Ali, who is the most recent player that I watched. He got injured at the Senior Bowl, so we're not going to get athletic testing for him, but he's fast, decisive, and explosive. I think he has above average speed, but what really sticks out is his elite trait is his ability to just spring out of his jump cut and reach top speed five yards down the field. He can make abrupt speed and directional changes. In short yardage, he does a good job of powering through contact, but he's not the most reliable receiver, and he had five fumbles in 2023. My sixth running back is Tyrone Tracy Jr. out of Purdue. He has the least conventional running style of anyone in this class, and it makes sense because he's a converted receiver. He's very upright, and it at times, he doesn't seem that decisive in the open field, but he has honestly a rare ability to identify cutback lanes and find escape routes when he's already 10 yards down the field surrounded by crowded rushing lanes. He has loose movement skills. You see that with his combine testing, 96th percentile short shuttle, 90th percentile three cone, 40 inches in the vertical jump. But you also see that on tape with his ability to stack multiple moves together. He can juke, spin, slip around a tackle, and there's minimal gear down transitioning between moves. He definitely has some off script tendencies. He's a little bit too much of a freestyler at this point, but for someone that's still new to the position, I was really impressed by his field vision. He's consistent pressing the line on outside zone, setting up those backside cutback lanes. He has soft hands, catches the ball consistently. He didn't run as diverse of a route tree as I was expecting, but he's definitely got some separation ability. And he also has the play strength and awareness to be an effective pass blocker. He's got decent size. Even though he is kind of upright, like I said, I thought he did a pretty good job of bouncing off of contact. And I think he just needs more experience. I think he needs to get more decisive at planting and accelerating instead of trying to make that extra defender miss. But to me, Tracy is another underrated running back prospect. I've got USC running back Marshawn Lloyd at five. He has the most violent and explosive jump cut in this class. He gains so much horizontal leverage and transitions out of his cut almost immediately. I think as a one cut running back, he can be a big play machine. He can also string together consecutive cuts while maintaining his speed, which I think is 
adequate to above average, and you see flashes of the perfect blend of patience and decisiveness. He can let blocks develop and then quickly accelerate upfield, and he had a lot of plays on tape where he was able to reverse his path and just create something out of nothing, but that creative running style did get him into trouble sometimes. There were also a lot of plays where he passed up a three or four yard gain to cut back into traffic and try to create a big play that didn't exist. It almost seemed like that was a coordinated coaching point for USC's offensive players. It's like Lincoln Riley was saying, if it's not a 50 yard gain, I'm not interested. He did have three fumbles last season and eight for his career. He looks natural catching the ball out of the backfield, but he wasn't used in the passing game that often, only 34 career receptions. And then he doesn't do a great job squaring up blitzers and his anchor and pass protection is very questionable. He had some dominant losses in blitz pickup where he just got launched into orbit. My RB4 is probably the second most underrated player in this class, and that's Kamani Vidal out of Troy. He's at 207 on the consensus board. Me and Marcus Whitman are the only two believers at this point. I think he's a top 100 player and a true three down running back. He might not have the elite upside, but I think he has a very high floor. So I love running backs that are short and compact. He's just under 5'8", which is fifth percentile for running backs. But when it comes to the overall athletic score, which I weight differently for every position, height barely plays a factor at all. I think it's like 1% of the total score. He has that low center of gravity, powerful lower half. That allows him to just grind through contact, drive his legs. He consistently bounces off of tackles. And then when he does get brought down, he gets two to three extra yards through the tackle. But he also has the speed to win around the corner. He had multiple touchdown runs where he was able to tightrope down the sideline and just bend into the end zone. And he can outrun linebackers down the middle that are closing in on him from the side. He has good vision. Troy ran a lot of different concepts and he was efficient setting up his blocks, decisive getting downhill. He's got a nasty stiff arm. He does a good job of anticipating and sidestepping pressure in the backfield. And he has the best pass protection tape in this class. He processes pressures so quickly. He has the perfect balance of aggression and control when he's squaring up a blitzer. He's firm into initial contact, but he doesn't overextend. He's got the natural leverage where he can actually drop his anchor and sustain blocks. Around this time of year, where running back coaches are starting to go through the tape. Like, I just think everyone in the league is going to see Kamani Vidal's pass blocking tape and start bugging their coach to draft him in the fifth round or something. My biggest negatives for Vidal, he has 871 career touches, which is not ideal. I don't think he's the most creative runner between the tackles. When he gets seven to 10 yards upfield, really his one option is just to truck that last defender. And he doesn't have a lot of sudden burst out of his jump cuts. But I think he's definitely the most underrated running back prospect in this class and second to Elijah Jones, the cornerback out of Boston College overall. My RB3 is Jonathan Brooks out of Texas. He's only had one season as a starter, so not a lot of hits over his career, but his season did end with an ACL tear, so that's definitely lowering his grade. If he was fully healthy, I would have him as my RB2. The gap between them is pretty slim, but with running backs, you're hoping to get a lot from them in their rookie contract, and I think there's a good chance that year one Jonathan Brooks is not going to be explosive as he will be over the next three years. He has good size. He can lower his shoulder and power through tackles. And I think you can trust him to be a three down back. He's got the play strength and control and pass pro. And after the first two weeks of the season, he didn't have a single drop. He's kind of an upright runner, which does limit his contact balance if he isn't really bracing for contact. He can get tripped up by low tackle attempts. And I think the speed and explosiveness are just average. My second running back is Jalen Wright out of Tennessee. He is a fast and explosive home home run threat, 4.38 in the 40 yard dash, and he had the second highest broad jump for a running back since 2003. He can make one cut, regain his top speed, and win the edge instantly. For a speed back, he actually has decent size, 210 pounds. He has pretty good contact balance, and he's able to maintain that top speed while he's shedding arm tackles. I think he's a patient and decisive processor. He is very eager to bounce everything outside. Although Tennessee's offense is pretty unconventional, they're spreading everything out they're counting the box on every play and they're really only handing it off if they've got an extreme numbers advantage. He faced one of the lowest average box counts in 2023, so he had so much breathing room and space to break outside. And I understand why he was so bounce happy because when he hits the corner, the secondary defenders are spread so far out. So that's where all the space is. He had a fumble issue in 2022, but last year he only had one fumble. He's got pretty reliable hands as a receiver. I think good awareness in passing 
pass protection. His anchor and play strength are lacking, but I think he's probably one of the five best pass protectors in this class. And I think his elusiveness and escapability in the open field is just average. He can make one defender miss, but he really struggles to stack multiple moves together. And my top running back is Trey Benson out of Florida State. He has the ideal combination of size and speed, just over six foot, 216 pounds. He ran a 4.39 in the 40 yard dash. Florida State ran a lot of power and counter. He's very patient, waiting for those lanes to develop and running behind his blockers. And he can accelerate quickly, hit that top speed and outrun everybody to the end zone. He has good power through contact. He's able to use stiff arms and hand fightings to shed angle tackles, but he's not very elusive in the open field. He's a one speed runner that's very rigid changing directions. If he's trying to plant and cut, it takes multiple gather steps to slow down. He was a really good receiver for pretty much all of his tape, except the Syracuse game was just a nightmare performance. He had three drops. I think one or two of those ended up being intercepted. He only had 24 targets last season, but he didn't have any drops outside of that Syracuse game. So I think that was just a one-off. And then he hasn't fumbled the ball once in his entire career. So I think Trey Benson is a very complete prospect. If he was just able to change directions more cleanly, I think he'd be in that Jameer Gibbs, Kenneth Walker tier of second round prospects, at least how I viewed them. But the clunky lateral movement skills has him as a third round prospect for me. Keep in mind that I do account for positional value with these running back grades. That really only affects my grades in the top two rounds. So I would say Trey Benson, Jalen Wright, and Jonathan Brooks are having their grades deflated a little bit. But then once you get past the top 50 or so picks, positional value is not really a major factor. These are the running backs I haven't watched. Blake Watson out of Memphis had some insane testing at his pro day. 41 and a half inch vertical and 135 inch broad is the longest broad jump for a running back ever. And then Michael Wiley and Frank Gore Jr. I might get to if I have time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments any NFL draft prospects that you'd like me to cover. And if you want to see my full draft board as an interactive filterable table, I've got that up at a to zsports.com. The link to that is in the description.